wraps of a traditional Egyptian meal. Very excited about this. So we've come to Abu Tarek in central Cairo to have kushari, which literally translates as food of the rights of the gods. And it's one of the Egypt's most popular dishes. Traditionally, uh, a lot of like laborers and workers will have it. It's a really sort of carb-rich uh, meal to sort of get you through the day. And a lot of them will actually have it for breakfast. It's made by mixing rice with pasta and lentils, um, but also then it has like tomato sauce on it, uh, and also then like garlic vinegar, and um, little kind of fried, uh, onion shavings as well. Here it is. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Are you okay? Sure. Spicy? No. No spicy? <laughs> okay. Very good. A lemon. Garlic, vinegar. Garlic, vinegar, yeah, yeah. Mm. Some Thank you. <laughs> spicy. Yeah, for me, it's spicy. <laughs> yes. One of the favorites of Egypt, yes? Yes, yeah. Koshari. Yeah, Koshari. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yummy, 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 Look at this beautiful, look at the beautiful place here. Look at the chandelier. Finally, we're back onto oh. a winner. <laughs> Dick, things are picking up again. Okay, so this was 130 uh, Egyptian pounds, which is like what? Six dollars? For two people. Maybe seven. With drinks and food. I'll be honest with you, I was a bit skeptical about the different things in here. You know, a bit of pasta with rice and lentils. So I was like, it sounds like, you know, you let a young child go crazy in the kitchen. Putting lentils with the pasta. My God, it works so well. It's so good, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. I can't believe it. And I thought it would need cheese, but it doesn't, does it? It's almost kind of light without the cheese. Maybe this is going to turn into a food channel now. And this guy said, have a pudding, have a pudding. So I was like, okay. So I got here a traditional Egyptian rice pudding. Um, and Amy, if you just give me a second, I'll give you a try of it. Me? Okay. Well, I've still got food on that. You go first. Okay. Oh, wow. Is that good? It's actually good. Is that? It's really creamy. Mm. Right, big mouthful. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's actually really nice, isn't it? Do you want, do you want a spoon? <laughs> <laughs> so full. Yeah, have a spoon. <laughs> but yeah, this place, 10 out of 10, honestly. It's so cheap, such good food, really friendly staff, and a bright green, bloody... <laughs> a bright green chandelier, what more could you ask for? Perfect. <laughs> It's actually incredibly similar to um, our rice pudding in the West. Like one thing we've noticed in Egyptian food is health as delicious as that was. It's very meat and carb based, which is not the healthiest. So we're outside the main Egyptian museum here in Cairo. Like so, it's all just like really dusty. That's like really dusty. The roof's like horrible. Like they, it makes you realise how nice the British museums are. Like it's just not very well looked after, is it? 
It's a shame because they've obviously got awesome things here. But everything's just covered with a layer. Of and, there's, and there's lots of like construction equipment around. Things are being moved around. A lot of the things don't have English labels. Things are in just storage up here. I just can't believe how dusty it all is. So Amy's just said, "This is Ramses the second. Why would you say that? Like him. She's the same size as him. I thought that's what you were saying because she's the same size as him. I think it might be. Uh... No, his face looks like Ramses. I think it is Ramsey the second, is it? No. No. And Man and Take the Third. We'll cut all that. Uh, you can see what you can see what I mean. It's just like it's like we're behind the like curtains, like we're in the storage room at the back or something. It's just giant boxes around. Look how dusty it all is. Bloody Hathor, it's an original god. They think, they think it's one of the oldest gods we've ever been worshipped. This one's cool. That's the hippo god. In fact, there was a thing where they insulted her. Uh, and that actually led to... Part of the reason... Hey, God, tell the camera. Part of the reason that uh, the Hyksos were overruled uh, by the Egyptians, by Thebes, was because they insulted... Um, they made an insult to this god. I can't remember the name of the hippo god. Which really riled them up and helped them sort of collectively start to make a move against the Hyksos. This is made of that stuff, Amy. What's it called again? Uh, alabaster. Alabaster. Well done. Smart. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Alabaster being mined uh, near the Valley of the Kings. Whether or not that was from there, I don't know, but... Amy's just said, this is cool pointing at this stone. I thought for a second it was a replica of the Rosetta Stone, which is essentially, I'll show an image of it, but it's where they had, um, let me get this right, Egyptian, and I wanna say Greek, on the same stone. And that stone was key to deciphering hieroglyphics because it had the same, you know, describing the same thing in different languages. So it helped them understand how to read it. Um, but I think it's held in the British Museum now, the Rosetta Stone. You can see here now they've got some Roman era uh, statues and it's immediately obvious how the technology and the craftsmanship has developed over the years. So this is, you know, thousand years, sorry, more than that, you know, it's maybe uh, one and a half thousand years later than the New Kingdom and it creates so much more of a lifelike uh, image. Amy noticed this, and there was me saying you can immediately tell the difference between the Greeks and the Romans. Well, here's a Augustus, the Roman emperor, uh, in pharaonic um, garb. Um, but you can see from his face that he's not an Egyptian, so almost a crossover between the two styles there. Interesting. Now, I think every kid in every school around the world learns about how the mummies have removed the brain through the nose. Well, these viewers are the implements used to do that. It's one of those things that you find incredibly squeamish, but you've got to remember, the mummy, the person is dead. It is a corpse. <laughs> they can feel it. I think it's this one, the hooked implement, it says there. Presumably that's the one on the end, maybe? I don't know. That would have been the one to pull out the uh, brain. a massive fan of things like this because it just creates a real human element and sort of makes it real when you see things like people's shoes like for example in the uh, Imperial War Museum in London they have all the shoes from the Holocaust all just you know, piled up and it really brings home you know the uh, tragic um, you know, uh, genocide that took place and it's similar to this I don't know why but always these personal items like shoes it just drives home that these were real people yeah, someone's bloody shoes here. Well, we've seen what the normal people wore, but then we've managed to find these. And these are the Yeezys of their day. Is that right? Yeezys? Yeezys. Yeezys. I said Yeezys. They're the Yeezys of the ancient Egyptian world. See? 
I'm so down with the kids. <laughs> Typical Egypt, the one thing you come here to look for and take a photo of is Tutankhamun. You're not allowed to take a photo or video of him. I can't give you Tutankhamun, but I can give you his chair. Is, it, is that as good? <laughs> not the best. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say it's too loudly because I'm just about to leave past security. <laughs> I wasn't able to do this outside of this museum because there's so many suspicious people here and the police are so suspicious of tourists and treat us a bit like criminals and these arbitrary rules, they really bother me and for example like the museum, we weren't allowed to, uh, we were paid to get in and you're not allowed to take a photo of Tutankhamun which is like the entire reason I went in there. I just wanted to show you the sarcophagus of Tutankhamun because obviously you know, we visited his tomb but it just wasn't possible. They said no photos, no photos. People get really nasty, quite confrontational if you, you know, even try and take a photo when they, you know, we didn't try, but some guy in there tried to take a photo of Tutankhamun. And they're literally going through his phone in the museum, three police officers. I watched it happen. It's just nuts. Thank you, Shukran. Thank you. So you do have your good apples. He just gave us some free bread, so I just gave him a 20. Um, nice guy. But no, yeah, it just makes the whole vlogging thing so difficult because you're just constantly scared of getting stopped by a police policeman in uh, you know, casual clothes, an undercover policeman, and it's just very strange. It all stems from this suspicion that, and from the Arab Spring that took place 10 years ago when they overthrew their um, president at the time. Um, so yeah, it just uh, it's a bit of a sour note on things. Egypt is the ultimate, as it turns out, surveillance and censorship state. Um, and that was something I never expected uh, when we first decided to travel here. Um, and it's something that's really sort of taken the buzz out of it all. But you know, they still got camels walking around and uh, you know, beautiful character of Cairo, so whatever. So we've got some supplies, mainly giant watermelon, which is very welcome in 35 degree heat. You may be wondering, where are we staying? Well, this ought to give you a couple of clues. <laughs> ought to give you a real good clue of that. So we're just back at the apartment now, and I just wanted to find the ad to that sort of message I was saying. You know, my, my ambition is to really kind of give you the truth of a, of a country and my experience of their culture and my experience of the difficulties, you know, filming here or being here, and not just the highlights of, you know, Tutankhamun and the fantastic history and whatnot. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to just make you aware of this. Egypt's Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities states it is completely forbidden to take or share photographs of scenes that can, in one way or another, damage the country's image. So it's actually illegal to say anything bad about the country and record that. Um, which goes to give you just a taste for, you know, how difficult it is to, you know, film videos like this um, and how easy it is for police to essentially just like delete things off your phone, confiscate your cameras, etc. Um, and so I have to be very careful about what I say in public. But yeah, it's not going to stop me. As I mentioned, I am not someone to break the law, but I am someone to bend the rules. <laughs> we're still going to, we're still going to do the pyramids. We're still going to um, do the walk and talk around Cairo. And if I get stopped and get my SD card, you know, um, confiscated, you know, so be it. So yeah, thanks for joining me. And then tomorrow we'll be having a look at some more Egyptian culinary delights. Um, and also just, yeah, having a general look around Cairo and getting to know the city a little bit more. Just having a shower when I realised that I'd seen someone outside the building uh, with no legs asking for money. And you get so used to getting heckled here, and not heckled, hustled and bothered that you start to become numb to it. And I was like, of all the people in the world that could do with 200 Egyptian, which is about five pounds, he's the guy. You see a lot of these YouTubers giving away like Ferraris and like thousands of dollars to people. But I think, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to give away thousands of dollars. You know, if everyone just does a little bit and I give this guy five pounds, you know, that'll help him out a lot. You've seen how much we got two meals today for 130. So if I give him this 200, I'll feed him for the day. He'll get a few meals out of that, trust me. Um, but I just hope he's still there. There's nothing to me as a wrestler or anyone who, you know, who lives in the sort of countries that we're from. Um, so I'm going to hope he's still there. Um, 
If not, we'll try and get some tomorrow. It's actually my last 200. <laughs> I'm clean out of money now. to actually film it. Is that, is, that, is, that, is that bad? I don't know. I guess I'm just trying to encourage people to do the same when they travel. You know, in any country there are people who are disabled. It's a difficult life. But I think particularly in a country with a GDP per capita of like 3,000 US dollars, I'm assuming, you know, life is even harder to be disabled out here than it is, you know, in a wealthier country. So, I don't know. Is it okay just to film them? And show, show people on YouTube, you know, give a fiver to the homeless guy with no legs? I guess I can't do what I'm doing wrong these days.